So we'll talk a little bit about psychedelics. Probably nobody knows about psychedelics much here, huh? About 98% of you. But how, uh, you know, things you might already know, but put it in a little different framework. Um, how we might, uh, how, how float tanks can be a, a real asset to folks who are having um, psychedelics with the intention, the intention of um, some form of psychedelic assisted psychotherapy. So I, I uh, sort of came together, uh, pulled together a map uh, of how, how psychedelic experiences can work to help folks get beyond. So that this, this has a lot, to, this little uh, <clears throat> proverb here, when death finds you, may it find you alive. Alive means living your own damn life, not the life that your parents wanted, not the life that your culture wanted or political party, just what your own soul wants to live. So. The notion here is, is that we experience um, adaptive strategies. The, the idea is, is we, we didn't just bring our opposing thumbs with us in this millions and millions of years of evolution. We also brought the understanding and drive to not be rejected by our pack. The, and so if a baby even uh, a couple weeks old knows how to read the, the egg donor and the sperm donor's face, and anybody else is going to care for it. Because if they, if they just walk away and leave the baby, the baby's dead. So we adapt ourselves naturally so that we're not rejected. We're not seeing a face that's scowling at us or saying, you know, you're not good enough or whatever else. So what we do then is we adapt ourselves. So we, if we're in a family where, where singing's not allowed, then we don't sing, we don't play sports, we don't do whatever it is that the family of origin says we shouldn't be doing. And of course, then we move into, into the peers and the peer group sort of gives us another feedback session. We don't wear those shoes, don't do this, don't do whatever. Um, so by the time we end up, even being a young adult, we're so shaped and so uh, um, really distorted from our authentic self that we don't know who we are. Uh, psychedelic experiences can, if they're well uh, prepared for and well conducted and well integrated, can introduce us to our authentic self, the self really before the adaptive strategy started. What we're looking for there, that, that infant's looking for, and if you look at the work of Sue Johnson, who works with couples who uses the attachment issue, which is a lot of attachment theory, which is what we're doing here. Uh, we're basically seeking safety. We're seeking a sense of attunement. So when we're warm, we get a blanket. If we're hungry, we're fed. There's a sense of being received in the world as, with joy. We, we get the message that we're special in some way, somewhat somebody really cares about us. There's a message that we uh, can work with our emotions, and our emotions are going to be uh, understood and processed in some kind of reasonable way, and someone has our back. So if you think about those five qualities and you look back at your childhood, to the degree that you didn't get 100% of those, you've adapted yourself to survive. That's why you're not in an alley somewhere with a fentanyl needle in your arm. Adaptation is great and wonderful. It just doesn't let us be who we authentically are. Um, see what this guy is. So pieces of the puzzle here. That would be attachment theory. That's what we're just talking about there. Um, Reparenting is, a, is another part of this process. And the work with uh, Daniel P. Brown, he passed away a couple years ago, a Harvard psychologist, the only person, I, only psychologist I know of that has worked actively with using attachment theory with some of the most difficult uh, populations. The folks that used to be categorized as borderline, now it's really considered more complex PTSD. But folks that have such a small and, and fragile sense of who they are, that when they meet someone, they sort of melt into whatever it is they're wanting from them. And that sort of uh, turns on and turns off. But the, the, one of the, the things to really recognize about what I'm talking about is so much of this stuff is unconscious. 
so much of this, we don't have any idea that we are, uh, we are conditioned. We don't know we've adapted ourselves. We think we really are who we are. In a, in a, a healthy psychedelic experience, one part of that experience can be thought of as the, the two elements of any experience, which is awareness and object. So if the experience happens well, there's a separation of pure awareness from the object. If these objects are adaptive strategies, then it's sort of like everything I thought myself to be, all the, the I, me, and mine, become a collection of its, they're objects now. So we can be, if, if the person is prepared to realize this on this experience, they can see that I'm not my body, I'm not my breath, I'm not the thoughts, I'm not the emotions, I'm not the, the any sense of smallness or restriction that I've, I've brought in my life in order to not be rejected by people that are, you know, caring for me and all the rest. And how do, how do float tanks figure into this? I'll get to that, but the, the main thing is to recognize that a, a good, you know, five gram uh, psilocybin experience, for example, or ayahuasca, you know, well managed and, and others, allow this separating out to be able to have an experience of pure awareness, mystical experience, non-dual state of consciousness. So in that experience, if we, again, if we are coached to notice, we can see that all of these, all of this, what we needed as a, as a two week old child, all of that is here. There, there's, there's no fear in this space. There's no fear in this state of mind. There's no hope, nothing needs to change. There's no urgency. There's a sense of natural peace and openness and a sense of whatever resilience that we've pulled together because we were able to adapt. That's one of the, the, the common flips in, in this seeing who am I. I'm not the adaptive strategies. I'm the creative, articulate, uh, brave person that was able to adapt. So I, I can adapt if I can adapt then, I can adapt now, except now I can adapt with a sense of who I actually am and move forward. And that can create all sorts of disturbances in relationships, in family of origin systems, in where the person's generating income. All sorts of things can change because they realize, I don't know who's showing up, but it wasn't me. So to be able to prepare people for that and to be able to give them an experience that's in the neighborhood of that psychedelic experience. That's the float tank. Again, with some coaching around that, now I'm talking about integration, not preparation yet. Some coaching around that, they can see that if they go into a 90 minute float tank, after they have, I don't know, five or six at least to have some comfort there and know how to drop in completely, they can, can recreate and, and notice again that the power of that, of that opening into pure awareness and the objects, the, the I, me, or mine, it's. And they can continue even to have insights like might what we expected in the psychedelic experience. Oh, I understand how this led to this and why I did that and why I did this and why I thought of myself this way, blah, blah, blah. So it, it can be very powerful. That's one reason that I, I float every week. I've had my float in a sauna, then I go and have a nice deep tissue uh, massage. A lot of stuff is stored in the body. That'll get to some of this other stuff here. Let's see. So that's what we talked about with the making objects. But the, the, the notion of the reparenting is to be able to, to step back and know that even when we're two weeks old, we know what we need. Back to Daniel P. Brown. He would work with hip, uh, a low level of hypnosis with these folks. And he would say, notice what the ideal parent is doing. He's not saying what the ideal parent is doing there's an assumption that the ideal parent knows and the ideal parent is right here. So we're moving from a place where our mother and our father, the egg and sperm donor and anything else, anybody else out there that's in our extended family system is not important. What's important is right here. I'm my own mother. I'm my own father. And on a very deep, clear level, I know exactly what I need. And then of course, there's be difficulty in putting what I, what I need into my life. But the, the, my higher self uh, knows that. And I can tap into that higher self and I can tap into that to a large degree in a float tank if I, if I practice that. Oh, piece of the puzzle. The integration of the insights are basically the, the insights that come in that 
psychedelic experience to go back into that similar space in the body, similar space in, in the, or the absence of the body, really, in the float tank, then be able to, to once again, uh, re, uh, visit those insights that we've had in that psychedelic experience and allow them to become more solid. A short way to say that is we're stabilizing our sense of identity. Who am I? The answer here is I am that which is aware. Not the body, not the thoughts. In fact, a lot, lot of parallel support here in the Buddhist cosmology. Who are we? Can we, can we see that? How old are you? That, those t types of, uh, of uh, interesting questions. How old am I? Well, we can start at the Big Bang if you want, but there's nothing new here. There's nothing new here. What, what are we looking at here? We're looking at light energy held together by some type of consciousness, whether we're talking about the clicker, the body, anything else. So to, to have visits into that, that level of consciousness is tremendously freeing. A lot of the things we were worried about and, and we were uh, caught up in and, and tripped up by and identified with, we can see they have nothing to do with my ultimate true nature. Much, much bigger than that. Uh, somatic experiencing, uh, this would be like Bissell van der Kolk, Body Keeps the Score, and Peter Levine, Pat Ogden, and these folks that work with the notion that uh, a lot of trauma the, uh, that makes one of the things that keeps, makes trauma so difficult to work with is that en there's energy stored in the body. And of course, that, that can come out uh, in, in psychedelic experiences, that can come out in a flow tank. It, it, if people understand what's going on and they have, they have trembles or they have whatever they have, if they understand not, what they're doing is healing, it's not anything to be concerned or worried about. Um, and this is sort of the the bottom line, I guess, what, what are we trying to do? What, why, what is it that we're trying to do with these psychedelic experiences in the long term? After we have, as we're having insights into who we are, insights into why we thought we were that, insights into how we made ourselves small, insights into the, the true motivation of our pre-adaptive self, pre-adapted self, then Basically, it's, it's stabilizing the highest state of consciousness and the highest form of being that we've ever experienced. For a lot of folks, that's psychedelics. It doesn't have to be. You can do it with uh, 20 years of meditation practice. You can do it with about 30 years of psychotherapy. All, all different ways of getting to it. But you can get to it, too, in a float tank if you're there and, and tuned into how to get there, how to, how to let go of all the noise and rest in that level of silence and stillness. Let's see, what am I doing here? Now we will talk a little bit about preparation because we talk about preparation. A lot of been, what I've been talking about so far is the integration part. The folks that I work with, which 75, 80% of the people I work with are, are having psychedelic experiences. The ones I work with that have problems, have had, uh, don't even want to use the term. They've had experiences that they've, they've come out in, in a place where they're in greater distress than before they had the psychedelic experience, those folks generally, they don't feel safe in the world. Back to the attachment issues, Some, the safety piece isn't there. They, 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 don't have, they don't feel special. They don't, spe they don't feel cared for or backed up. So what they're experiencing then is just a general distrust. And if they're talked into having a psychedelic experience, they often, that this separate, the original, the separation that can occur about 30, 45 minutes into the average average journey, this loss of a sense of who I am is overwhelming to them and they struggle and fight and say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to experience this. And they end up basically more frightened and more uh, concerned than they were before. So what I, what I tell people, and it's on my website in different places, if you're anxious and, and if you think about going into a sensory deprivation tank for 90 minutes in the dark, if that disturbs you in some way, you need to work that out. So, so and one way to do that is to go and have six or eight or 10 or 12 uh, float experiences until you get to the place that you recognize anxiety when it arises and you shift yourself so it's not a problem. Because the thing about a float tank is the door will open. The thing about a five or six gram psilocybin experience and certainly a well-medicined uh, 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 experience with, with you know, stronger plant medicines, the door doesn't open so easy. You know, good dose of ayahuasca. There's not a door, so you're gonna you're gonna be in this place that's gonna be very disturbing to you. 
and, and you don't want that. You want to be able to get to the place where you can surrender completely to the experience. And again, and, and float tanks to me are just a natural fit for that. Let's see. That's just, uh, that's okay. And this is my website, a, a, a picture from it. And if you, there's d different, different uh, places there. I'll talk about a float tank and more resources. And this is the last one. So this has to do a lot with now what do I do? I, I'm awake. I, I'm awake to who I, I I'm, uh, know myself to be. Um, I'm moving towards stabilizing that. I'm, I'm starting to integrate experiences and habits and all sorts of parts of my life that are, are going to be find uh, rewarding. And, and to find that, that moment when you realize that if, if anyone or anything that we have in our life is not bringing us alive, it's too small for us. That, that they, these are difficult insights. The kind of work I do with my clients, it's not just about let's feel a little bit better and, and keep everything rolling. It's more about let's figure out where the flat tires are. Let's figure out which, which folks we're, we're dragging along that really need to set aside. Uh, but it's a, a, a very worthwhile experience. And I appreciate the work that you and your industry do. And the folks that I work with appreciate that. If you have any questions, I, they're going to put me in a room someplace. I'd love to talk to you. Thank you. Mm-hmm.